here about, uh, well, first of all, Hatch Brothers, you know, how, just as long as we're here and we got this thing rolling, just about your family, like when they, when did they start running rivers? And I went on my first trip when I was nine years old down the Yampa with my dad. And he started Grand Canyon in 1934 in little wooden boats. He met uh, Wally Perry's great-granddad at Galloway, and he got the design for the Galloway stone wooden boats, and he built some wooden boats and ran those through Grand Canyon. And so I was born into river running. Uh, the year I was born was 1933, and he ran Grand in 34. So then when I got old enough, I always wanted to go with him, and which I did every chance. I'd hide in the truck so I could get on the trip. But, uh, yeah, 57. Wow. <laughs> You're getting up there. And that's how we got started. Uh, years passed, and uh, then we, uh, at the advent of World War II, we got the rubber boats, which were really good. And uh, my dad took one with Amos Berg down the middle fork of the salmon. Uh, I'm not sure the year, but the, the rubber boat did so well that he adapted uh, river running uh, two rubber boats because you can haul so much more on shallow draft. And so he did run after the wooden boats wore out, switched to the rubber boats, and I went with him. And I ran Grand Canyon in 1954, my first trip. And it was funny, I'd never seen Grand Canyon, and my brother Don and Smuss Allen came down to run and they, we each had a boat. And my assignment was to follow those guys. But they'd run off and leave me. Every day they had faster boats and I had the big load. I was the last guy off the beach. This is your first trip. <laughs> my first trip in Grand. So I was running the rapids by sight. I'd had a lot of experience on Middle Fork and the Green, the Yampa, Cataract. and uh, So I read the current by sight and after three days I said, you know, you guys are I'm getting upset. I never see it till lunch. They stop at lunch, you know, and the evening camps. So I took the lead. I said, if I tip over, you guys will be there to pick me up. <laughs> it's a lot better than being in last, where they're, they've gone. So I took the lead, and Don said, you've never seen Horn Creek and uh, these big rapids down below. And I said, well, uh, yeah, there's always a first time. And I did, I led for another day, and then we got our group organized better and stayed close together and went on through. Then I got to the end of the trip, came back around and ran a solo one boat trip all myself. And what kind of boat? The it's boat great. I had was a little flat nosed rubber boat called a seaplane tender. And uh, on the back we had a Mercury 20 horse outboard and it was in uh, the, they called it the old Mercury hurricane engine. It was, it was a fast engine. One little wave would come in from the side and smack it, and, and it would swamp out on you. But for emergency situation, we had a setup where I could run to the front and grab oars. We had oars on them. And I could row to shore and fix the motor. So in those days, our theory was you got one motor. If you break it, you row all the way through Grand Canyon. Well, that's not too formidable unless you're going to try to run it in eight or ten days. Then it's a pretty tough run. So we took really good care of our motors. It wasn't until later years that we took spare motors. We they used to hide motors down there, right? Yeah, hide them in the rocks. Right. And then if we had an emergency, we'd say, well, down by the Bass Trail, we've right. got a Merc covered with rocks. And we'd <clears throat> go get it. We it needed on. them, too. Just like we'd sent to the <laughs> store. The customers thought it was so nice. <laughs> They'd say, a motor right here around the bend. OK, we'll put her on. We need it this trip. Or we got an extra. Ten gallons of gas, we'll hide it. We Ted had, had big baskets then. It, it, it kind of at the end of the trip, you just hand him the basket with the motor in it. Yeah. All the little parts. <laughs> the parts were still there. You'd send a basket Somewhat. down yeah. beforehand <laughs> put the motor in. Then we'd hide food. Remember, there's a cave down there by uh, Tuck Up Canyon that we'd hide food in. It was air-conditioned, and it was cool. And it, it kept canned ham and things like that just beautifully. Well, wh when did you think of... Okay, you were running those little tenders. When, when did you think of putting a 33 on there, and how did you decide to get into the to the business? How did the business start taking off there? Oh, it started way on back before in the wooden boats. Uh, the, there were friends of my dad's, uh, Dr. Calder, for example, uh, uh, and uh, Roy Spain. 1938. 
Tony Eddington and those guys. Was it 1938? Uh, 34 down yeah. here. Oh, yeah. And up in the, or in, in the dinosaur area was in a, a 28 or 9. I'm not sure on that. I remember the big sign used to have. But yeah, 20, Grand Canyon 29. Was 19, the company started in 1929. Yeah. But uh, he these doctors would go with him, and, and my dad couldn't get off work enough unless somebody paid some salary to help support the trip. And they started doing that. The phone would ring, the guy would say, hey, I want to hire you to take me and my wife through the, the canyon. And he'd say, well, I have to get off work, you know. And, well, I'll pay you your wages. And that's how it started. And the phone rang more often and more often. And over the years, we became the largest river running company in North America. I remember. And the Fred statement. used to go with us. I wanted to run his outfit. And he, so we let him. He said, no, I'm the, I'm the biggest one. And I said, I said, I'll start another one then, run it my way. But we ran several trips together back in the old days. Uh, well, I say old days. They were old days. Good, us, they're not. recent, Fred. Just a, in the 60s when it really started going full bore. Yeah. And Ted was really good. Remember the big trips we used to take down? Oh, yeah. The, we'd take as many as 125 Sierra Clubbers down at one time. Thirteen boats we'd have there, one behind the other. Those yeah. are great days. They were so much fun. We called them the rape and pillage days. <laughs> We didn't hurt anything, though. No, environmentally, no, we, we environmentally, were we were way ahead of the park service. Way ahead of our time. We were too far ahead of our time. As a matter of fact, we had to wait, <laughs> let them catch up. And the us. bill collectors. But uh, it was great in those days. So much yeah. fun. Yeah, we, they're too serious nowadays. Everybody's well, going to write you a to ticket. Be. They and have to gonna... be. They have to be serious. Yeah. Now because we have all these young fellows coming along now. We have to set an example for it. It's a good thing yes. you and I set an example for the young It fellows. might be that there could be a few irresponsible young fellows in there. Well, it's true, but uh, I know, you know, too, the one thing, Ted, Ted, uh, the, 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 the people forget, the river runners were in the forefront of a lot of the things that, that to, to take care of the canyon and keep it clean. Yes. To haul human waste out. Step by step, and and we had company policies about drinking. Now the Park Service is getting into these policies. They're following us. Our company policy was no drinking during the day with the passengers. And just a beer or two for the boatmen when they go along. Maybe three beers at night when they were on camp. Now the park is beginning to. Make it get it. They're always running behind. And they want to police the river yeah. instead of learning from the river. It's such a great experience. We had so much fun. <laughs> well, a lot of it we can't put on. There, there are some <laughs> parts that we better not. Well, how did your how did the rigs evolve? And yeah, like the like you guys with experimentation. We'd run something down there. We'd break the frame. We'd say, "Well, we need to put another board on here." We used to carry we used to use wooden frames. Extra we carried the uh, brace and bit. And hammer as a matter of fact, I got as far bolts. as Badger one time, the first yeah. rapid, and had to broke the board, fell off the back, and had to stop yeah. and drill, take a brace and bit, build yeah. through. But it didn't have anything to do with his run. It just Pick up some. <laughs> <laughs> it just happened to break. It was one. That's of those. the same. It was trip. a time. That was my first trip, I think. And Ted didn't tell me about making all these cuts. <laughs> he was riding behind me, <clears> trying to show me how to run. And he said, you're supposed to read the river, but he never said you read it from left to right, or right to left, or up or down. He just said, read it. And I didn't know what reading the river. I kept looking around for something to read. I remember 24 and a half, Ted sitting on the back end with me. Yeah. And we used to be hang over the back end like little monkeys, remember? You had to hang on. To Clear get over the back end. To run and the we water. went over 24 and a half, which is a little sharp drop in the rock. And the next thing I know, Ted was talking to me, but we were way up in the front of the boat. We flew clear over the top of the passenger, both of us it landed, landed in the, front in the, of the duffel boat. pile. <laughs> but we uh, read it right. As we ran the equipment, we experimented and improved it in the years to follow and put the rigs, the motors inside. We weren't the first ones to do the inside rig, but it worked so much nicer and then uh, changed well, before, from what was wood that? to a, a before the plate aluminum. Things did, like that. Before the motors went inside, where were they? How did that they work? were over the back end, like, hanging out. Hanging over and the back we end. had a floor in the boat so that it would plane better. And the boat was faster that way. 
And when we'd go out onto the lake, the last part, we could really go. But when the boat would get soft in the back, the boat yeah. leaned way back like this, looking at the stars. And guys, to reach down there. I mean, he couldn't uh, see the front of the boat hardly. Would he? Yeah. He just, uh, it, but everybody contributed a little bit. Ron Smith, I guess, was one of the first to move inside. Yeah. And everybody contributed this or that or some little... Like side tubes. We, the, we used to call those training wheels. And Jerry Sanderson would come by with those on. We'd say, look, those guys are going by with training wheels and tease them. Well, they didn't like that, but what I found out is they're, your boat's a lot more stable in the water, and it didn't slow it you down. It took a while for you to find that out. Yes, you, I, I was, remember that. It was so obvious. I was one of the <laughs> first too ones. Easy. I was one of the first ones that put them on because yes. I couldn't keep the boat going right. With just going well, right. that way you could run them sideways <laughs> and make it. And uh, but uh, after we put those on, we never tipped the boat over. I think basically the like only insurance. one that stayed with the same thing was was Georgie. We told Georgie. Yeah, Georgie had the big rig. But she used to have a floor in those, <coughs> and she'd bail water out. And there were times when, if you ran uh, Crystal right, you could throw the water out of your boat, and you didn't have to bail. And I used to go into Crystal with 80 or 90 buckets of water in the, on the floor of my boat, and it would stabilize the boat much better than the empty boat will tip over a lot quicker. And when I hit Crystal, usually that shock in the first big hole, that all the water would go to the front of the boat, and then when it came up, it threw the water out. And so if you're lazy, you would never bail till you ran crystal. And then what you didn't get knocked out of the boat, you had to dip out with the buckets. The good thing about it too, there were a lot of things left in the bottom of the boat at the end yeah. of the trip. You can find old wrist watches and a guy's arm on it or <laughs> Ken, I think we're losing the interest yeah. of our interview. No, I don't think we're to gaze around yeah. the boat. No, I'm I don't think we cut these guys. I think off. he's going <laughs> We're just I think we're at a loss to tell you some of the stories that yeah, some are probably because can. I just think they they might be too risque or something uh, nowadays. Because I know the way I remember uh, our interviewer here the first time he went down <coughs> with us. What happened? Camped on Scorpion Island uh, oh, yeah. and uh, all night long. He sat up all night by the fire because of the, the scorpions, scorpions will get him. Get him. <laughs> he and my daughter spent the whole night keeping the fire going, remember? Do you remember Lake Mead? We had a gal in a tent one night, she's on a sandbar, and uh, the attractive young thing in the tent all alone, and she went to bed early, and we were having a few drinks around the fire. In those days, you could build a big fire. And after dinner, we all turned in, and during the evening, the river started to cut the bank away, and her tent fell into the river, and she was in the tent with the door zipped up, screaming, yelling. We ran down to the, to the edge of the water and uh, she was headed down the river <laughs> in her tent. And we had to jump in and grab the tent and pull her out. But she couldn't get out of the tent and she was just terrified. After that, she never did sleep in the tent, to my knowledge. She kind of gave up on the tent idea. Well, well it sure has changed, hasn't it? Oh yeah, it's changed. Uh, it's a uh, for the better, yeah. Uh, if they don't go too far, I think the I really think the upsetting thing is that uh, to uh, see the park instead of working with them, more get more law enforcement conscious. I think they should work. As a matter of fact, at one time in the early early times, I wanted to see the park occasionally get on our boat and go as with us to give it little talks and things and work not to go down and police us because you scare people to death when they, but they used to have, uh, remember when they or had kayaks, they talks. have, yeah, interpretive talks, what we wanted, but instead of that, they had kayaks where they could sneak along the edge of the back bank and come around, boo, and catch you <laughs> yeah. doing something, I mean, peeing behind a rock or something. Like arrest that. you for, that's, I remember one time we got arrested for uh, putting some uh, cans, uh, the boatman took some cans and put them in a garbage can at Phantom Ranch, and they arrested him because one of the things he put in there was a can. That's uh, that's well, we don't need to do that. We need. I'm very glad to see now. Things have changed. The Bowmen have their own organization, and uh, they're talking. Seem to be they've grown up now. I see Tom Moody's president, and uh, we remember when he started. Yeah. Sometimes we had trouble finding these young fellow to tell them which way the river was running. <laughs> well, now did you? So you did when you were starting. Did you have trouble rounding up boatmen to go? Yes, so there weren't many men that could run Grand Canyon. Yeah, just a few. Just of them. a few. <laughs> And uh, if one got the flu, 
you had to really search to find qualified people, especially uh, guys who were uh, able to take the equipment that we had then and run because it wasn't as good, it wasn't as, it was more remote. And there, uh, I remember trips in the old days, I'd go all the way through Grand Canyon and never see anyone. As a matter of fact, we'd hike up to Phantom Ranch to talk to the guys. Well, right after the dam was closed, we were running on 5,000 for yes. feet. And now Carol said it was three, but it couldn't have been three. No. It was 5,000. They were closing, they closed the gates and they were filling the dam. And we were running on real low water, really low water. Yeah, I don't think no, could, and nobody else was doing that. Not there weren't very many. No, you'd go the whole way through and not see it. You wouldn't see anybody else. We used to go up to yeah, like you say, we go up to Phantom Ranch. To Remember that play? Swim in well, swimming pool. Swimming pool. Swim, swim in their swimming pool. And watch all the little hippie girls. So what? So what kind of guys did you? <clears throat>